know him, you don't know wrestling. This man has held six different belts. The only team to win all three major belts, the Crockett Cup. This man's a legend in his How oh, am I not going to like this guy, right? He knows everything. Now, I want to ask you one. Welcome to another episode of Hero TV. I'm taking the lead today because we're at my favorite place, Chicago Bandits Ballpark. Of course, co-host Paul Myers, Emily Allard, star outfielder, Chicago Bandits. Good morning, people. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How do I do on that, Paul? I'm doing great, and this is such a beautiful stadium. It's a beautiful day to be out here, and for you, the fans want to know, first of all, were you always into sports? I was. I started playing sports at a very young age. My older sister actually used to play softball, and I would come to her games. And uh, I, f I fell in love at that moment and then just never stopped and took me here. So it's not a, it's not a bad place. When you were growing up, uh, what other sports were you playing? I played soccer first, actually, and then got into softball. And then when I got into high school, my parents, uh, they forced me to play another sport just in case <laughs> softball never worked out. So they don't force me to do much, but that was one of them. So I picked up basketball. Uh, basketball, I absolutely loved. It taught me a lot about the mental game. I had to get over mistakes a lot faster. And I really think my time there helped build my athleticism to take me where I am today in softball. When you were growing up, who were your heroes? Who do you look up to? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I wouldn't be a softball player if I didn't say Jenny Finch. Uh -huh. I, I used to watch her, and I was a pitcher when I was younger. So she definitely has paved the way for a lot of us. And then to follow her to the Chicago Bandits is, uh -huh. is pretty cool. But, you know, I, I just I like people who play the game the right way. Um, I don't know if you guys know Rob Nen from the San Francisco San Giants. Francisco. Mm -hmm. He was my favorite pitcher in Major League Baseball. So I got a few here and there, but my, my parents keep me grounded. So they are, they're definitely. So uh, as Jenny Finch being one of your role models, she obviously is a uh, star athlete for, was a star athlete for the Bandits. How was it when you finally got to meet her? Oh my gosh. So when I first got to meet Jenny, I tried not to fangirl because I just, you know, you know, you, you put your pants on the same way every morning. Um, but by about the third or fourth time, I gave in and I asked her for a selfie. So that was last year. So I held out for three years before I did that. But she's, she's fantastic. She's a great role model for the kids. She plays the game the right way. She has paved the way for everybody that comes after her, including myself. Um, she's fantastic. And every time she comes out to our stadium in August, I always look forward to saying hello. Well, speaking of the kids, Every article I read, every time I talk to you, the kids, the kids, the kids always come up. What does it mean to you? At the end of the game, you've got 200 kids out there waiting to meet Emily Allard. You know, it's actually really simple. I was that kid, and I never lose sight of that. And I think the kids deserve to see somebody who's just like them. I'm no different. Um, I actually had a little girl come up to me yesterday and ask if she could hug me because she loved me so much. And I was like, I am, I am no different than you. I've just worked a little longer. That's all. So for me, it's all about them. I don't play for myself. I don't play for the stats. I'm just happy to be on the field. And I want them to see that there's, you know, that softball brings you things that you don't get in any other aspect of life. So enjoy the game, respect the game. And at the end of the day, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the people in the stands. So I would be doing them a disservice if I didn't make it all about them. Well, now that you're, you're back with the band, and so I say that because last year you had a, an injury. You were out with a concussion. Mm -hmm. how, was, how was coming back from that, and, and what went through your mind the whole time? You know, it's actually uh, it's an ongoing process, and I can't sit here and tell you today that I'm cleared. Like, there's, it's a lot of... It's a lot that goes into it. So half of it's mental, half of it's still physical. I, uh, I go to vision therapy in the morning. I come home and I nap for two hours, and then I go to the game at night and sleep and repeat. So it's, uh, it's, it's been an interesting road. Uh, so like I said, I'm, I'm happy to be wearing cleats and on the field. Um, it's an experience that you don't really know how to handle or understand unless you've experienced it yourself. So. It's a daily grind, but my teammates have my back. Uh, my first game in left field, I probably made about two or three errors, and Brennan Moss in center field was right behind me every time waiting for that to happen, you know? So um, they, they just pick you up along the way, and you rely on what you can rely on, and I am where I am in the process, and there's nothing that I can do to speed that up except keep a smile on my face and keep playing the game the way I know how. And, and for you, for the fans out there that are getting more familiar with the Bandits, because every year you gain more and more publicity. I mean, it's a beautiful stadium out here. How many years have you been playing professionally? This is my fourth year, and uh, it's it's 
just as beautiful as it was <laughs> my rookie year. And when you've been training, I mean, there's never really an off season. What do you do during that off season to prepare for the upcoming season? You know, it's tough because as pro fast pitch players, we only get paid during the summer and we only have structure professionally during the summer. So in the off season, it's up to us to come back in shape, to come back ready to play and that type of stuff. So in the off season, personally, I work out at a facility here called the Academy Training Systems. Mm -hmm. They're uh, about five minutes down the road and Jason kind of looks at us as athletes, uh, where our weaknesses are, what we're really good at and kind of keeps us on track, so to speak, and pushes us to be better. So physically, I go to him to train. But in the off season, I work actually for the National Fast Pitch Coaches Association. So I graduated from Northwestern, two degrees. So I try to put those to use in the off season. Um, so I run their marketing and sponsorships. I handle the relationships between us and USSA, Wilson and DeMarini, Easton Shut, all those big companies, New Balance. And so that's fun for me because I my brain gets to go to work yeah. and then softball wise I I give lessons three nights a week here in Chicago and then run a company called be the momentum with my best friend where we give slapping clinics across the country so I try and stay busy I don't like to sit on the couch as uh, uh, as often as I can so we'll see it's yeah. it's good but you know you got to learn how to make a living on your own because yeah. playing the game for us just doesn't do it yet yeah. And those clinics, what do you do? You're saying slapping clinics? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I'm a slapper. So those that aren't familiar, we, uh, we get a running start through the left-hand side of the box, basically. It's our job to be the momentum, okay. um, put the ball in play, use okay. our speed to get on base, and make the defense work, basically. Okay. So if I can get on base, I've done my job. Okay. Uh, if I can get on first, chances are I can steal. If I can steal, I can score. So. My, my job, uh, like I said, is to get on base. So we go across the country teaching kids how to, how to do that well. Um, it's, not, it's not known across the country how to teach it very right. well. So we've kind of found a, a niche in terms of being able to reach the kids. Uh -huh. um, so it's fun and you know, you get to be a role model as you go and teach them it's not all about softball. And for these clicks, how do they get a hold of you? Because if there's people out there watching and says, hey, that's something I can add to my game, how do they get a hold of you for that? Sure, so our website is bethemomentumsoftball.com and we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at BE underscore the momentum. We post everything on social media, tips, advice, game footage from uh, college games our games so it's it's awesome I mean we're biased we yeah. think it's great but <laughs> we've gotten some really good feedback on it so it's it's been exciting well we also think it's great we're biased too <laughs> but the, the, you know the cool thing about be the be the momentum I think is that you're proving that you don't have to slug the ball over the fence mm -hmm. I mean there's nothing wrong with slugging over the fence but there's there's plenty of room for, and it's even more important for people like you to, to get on base absolutely. at the table absolutely so it's it's, it's a different point of the game, and it's not something that you see in Major League Baseball. So we actually get a lot of criticism about not being able to hit it far or what is that and, you know, stuff like that. And, I mean, that's fine. Like, everybody, everybody has their own opinions, but it's a valid part of softball. Our fields are smaller. The bases are shorter. Speed is everything. So if we can take advantage of that, I think they're just haters, in my personal opinion, because they can't run that fast, you know. So Clearly. sorry about it. Um, but, yeah, but we're just we're teaching the kids to be comfortable in their own skin and know what, what values they bring to the table. And if they can do that on the softball field, then we're teaching them how to handle that in life as well. And that's, that's my favorite part. Everything in softball translates to life. Well, and clearly you're proving right because you are part of the back-to-back -back reigning <laughs> National Pro Fast Pitch Champion mm -hmm. Bandits. Yep. Defending champions coming in this year going for three. Correct. Three Correct. But you're also involved with another softball adventure, Team Canada. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So I was invited to their Olympic tryouts. Uh, it's in about two or three weeks, and now there's no strings attached, no guarantees whatsoever. I'm one of, I believe, roughly 30 athletes that are going to try out. So it's an awesome opportunity. Softball being back in the Olympics is huge for our sport. And again, like I said, it's all, it's all about the kids and growing the game, and I think that's a a unique opportunity for me to continue to do that in a different country, in a different setting. Um, and so I, I have no expectations going in. I've, I've trained as hard as I can train. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. And if that's good enough, fantastic. If it's not, it was going to be an incredible opportunity. So I'm excited for what's to come. Well, we're excited too. <laughs> I, I have to mention one other thing too. 
the bonds from the players, between the players, is, is amazing here. Mm -hmm. And I know you've got some really close friends on the team, you've had some really close friends who aren't on the team. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the bonds that, that you women athletes make out there? You know, I think it's really interesting because we're, we're all in this together, we're all experiencing the same things, we're all barely making money. And when you surround yourself with people who are just as passionate as you are about what you do and what you love, that kind of forms its own bond. Um, so I have made incredible lifelong friends with the Bandits. Uh, Tammy Williams took me under her wing when I came in. Again, uh, another Northwestern alum, so I knew her prior. And I feel like I've kind of given that relationship to Sammy Marshall and a few of the others that are a little bit younger than me. And it's on our team, we've built this tradition that's all about giving back. Everything is about our culture, what we stand for, and and who we are as people means more than who we are on the field. So I think using that and knowing that that's our foundation helps us be as successful as we are. Because we're not the best team, and we know it. We know on paper we are never the best team on the field, but that doesn't matter when it comes to winning championships. Two titles speak otherwise. Two titles, baby. <laughs> hey, well, just got to make sure they give you, start giving you the hardware for that, too. Uh, June 14th. June 14th okay. is our ring ceremony, so Thanks. come on out. When, when you look at when you step back and see everything you've accomplished, what do you see so far? Because, I mean, two titles, you know, you're going for the Olympics. I mean, what do you see that you've accomplished so far? It's funny you ask that because I see nothing. Huh? I really do. And people in my life have to remind me huh? where I'm standing, who I am, what I'm wearing, what's next. Huh? I, I just see me living life. I'm literally living the dream. Huh? And I don't. My, my accomplishments for me are the people in my life, the things that I've been able to experience and the work that it's taken to get there. I don't, I don't see rings, I don't see Olympic rings, I, I don't see any of that. I, and people hate me for that, they do. They, they constantly remind me how successful I am and I just, I just don't see it. I don't see it because of your success that you might not see it but you motivate so many kids I mean that's the biggest thing I mean John and I both know when we've done different athletes and different sports I mean even being part of the industry you know when kids come up to you you know they don't know who you are in some respects but then they go yeah you're the one I saw I want your autograph what advice do you give to them because I mean we don't they don't have that personal contact sometimes with you know everyone to get to that level but an advice what advice do you give to them you know, it's interesting because at Northwestern, we were taught from the very beginning that everyone matters. Everyone has something to give. And so when I go down that autograph line, I try and make sure that I relate to every single kid, whether that's, hey, did you have fun today? Yeah. Or what's your name? Yeah. What position do you play? Yeah. I, I really, really try to say something to every single kid down the line. And my teammates hate it because it takes forever. <laughs> they know not to stand behind me. And I think there's, but it's that personal connection that wants them to come back. Yeah. And so if it takes me an extra 30 minutes every night to make sure that I say what I say to each kid, then I'm, go I'm gonna do that because that's what matters to me. So I hope what they see is that, one, I'm no different than them. That's, that's my main thing. I really, really am not. And two, that it, you, know, you, can, you can be whatever you wanna be, you can be whoever you wanna be. And when I step on the field, I know that they're watching. So I wanna make sure that whatever I give off is something that they would want to emulate because if it's not yeah. then I don't want them to take that away from the game so when I strike out yeah. back to the dugout and if I have any sort of reaction it happens where they can't see it no kicking the dirt in front of the no, kids <laughs> definitely not because you because there are the highs and lows of this industry you know sports industry I mean when you get into it as a fan you watch it one way but when you get into it what was the biggest change that you saw because you know you envisioned it one way but then actually you're performing and becoming now a paid athlete what was the biggest change that you saw you know, it's interesting because every time I step into the box, I firmly believe I can get a hit. I truly believe that I can bat 500. Like, that's just, just a deep down belief. But our game is a game of failure. So learning to bridge that gap and having high standards but knowing, you know, you're probably not going to hit 500 in the pros. You know what I mean? So learning how to deal with that and what uh, your standards are, what your expectations are, what your goals are. And that's something I try to teach the kids that I, that I work with in lessons and with Be The Momentum is that you can't be perfect. You can't be perfect. You can control what you can control, and after that, it's out of your hands. So learning 
um, you know, for me, batting 400 should be okay, you know, uh, even 350, but my goal will always be 500, I'm going to work to be 500. So it's just, it's learning to manage, you know, expectation with reality, and then leaning on your teammates when you go one for four and you think that's a bad day. Well, I will absolutely be killed if I don't mention one other thing. Sure. Bandit Nation. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm, I'm biased, you're biased. But it's unlike any other sports team, even in the NPF. It's not only kids. There's, there's adults out there, and I can't start naming them because there's too many. Mm -hmm. But what does that mean to you? You know, without Bandit Nation, we wouldn't have that fan foundation. You know what I mean? And you got to give it to them. They have been here for years. They show us photos of players that I didn't even know existed on the <laughs> Bandits, and that's that's what our organization is built on that's where the tradition starts it starts with them it starts with them having favorite players that we may have never heard of and i think helping to bridge that history gap is what makes them so special it's awesome to look over in the seats right by our dugout and see the same familiar faces they know our names they cook food for us like they they are truly fantastic and all they want is to see that core group grow so you know we wouldn't be here without bandit nation for sure and other than wanting to hit, you know, 500, what what goals do you have left in in um, in softball and, and in life? You know, I kind of want to change the world. That's you are. That's that's kind of my that's my overall goal, and I don't quite know what that looks like yet. But I want this league to succeed, and I want the kids that come after me to be able to make a living doing what we love. And we're not quite there yet. So it's my my goal to leave the stability of this league better than when I found it. I think a lot of players like to leave their legacy on the field. I don't, I'm not one of those. I don't want to do that. I want to leave my legacy on the business side and work to make softball viable from a company standpoint. So that's kind of my overall goal. Don't ask me how to get there yet. I'm still figuring that out uh, day by day as I go, but I think that's the beauty of it. People have told me to accept it. It is the way that it is and I can't. I just. I can't do that. So I'm just going to keep working, put my degrees and my brain to, to work and rely on everyone around me. And uh, so we will be able to make a living by the time I die. That's that's my goal. I believe that. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> when you are when you have your moments, uh, I guess, uh, maybe seconds of free time, what do you like to do? Because, I mean, besides softball, besides your businesses that you do, besides your passion, what else do you like to do for fun? I am a water baby. Uh -huh. So you will find me in the waves, uh -huh. you will find me on the sand, you will find me laying out uh -huh. in the sun. Uh -huh. um, anytime I get a free chance, I am either flying to go see one of my best friends, uh -huh. whether that's in Florida or Palm Springs or California. Uh -huh. um, you'll find me at a beach. And if not, I'll most likely be sleeping or watching <laughs> Law and Order SVU or <laughs> Criminal Minds. Those are my two. <laughs> Is there a particular beach that you like? Is it Florida versus California? You know, I'm from California, so right. that'll always have a special place in my heart. Uh, the, the, my top two current beaches, though, are Hawaii and uh -huh. Cancun. Wow. Those were fun. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but no, I just, I feel free when I'm in the water. I feel like everything goes away when I'm at a beach. Um, so if that, if I had to name a safe place, that would be it. I'm lucky to get to Racine. That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> I definitely make it a priority to, to get to a coast. Now you're talking about being part of the uh, Canadian uh, Olympic team. How did you choose that? Or they chose you? Or how did you... The, Pick that because most people not might be aware you know you have people that are born in the United States play for the United States or mm -hmm. play for other countries so to the best of my knowledge you have to be a Canadian citizen to be considered okay. for that national team okay. my mother and my grandmother were both born there and lived there okay. um, so my sister and I are dual citizens so okay. I'm a United States citizen and a Canadian citizen okay. so because of that I'm able to try out for the Canadian national wow. team okay. um, so there's a mutual friend between the Canadian team and myself. I uh, played in the same travel ball organization as her, Victoria Hayward, and she's been on the team since like 2008 or something. So she kind of put in a, a word for me with the head coach and they reached out to me. We had a few conversations and then I, I was able to make my way on the invite list. So With, with dual citizenship, do you get better health care? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. So I, t I turned the inevitable 26 uh -huh. in about three or four months. Uh -huh. So if you want to follow up with me in four okay. months when okay. I'm off my mom's insurance, uh -oh. you can certainly do so. <laughs> all your stuff taken yeah. care of. Oh, don't worry. I am. I got that planned. Now, now Canadian is a beautiful uh, country, Lake Louise, Toronto. Are there, are there any certain spots up there that you enjoy? Well, fun fact, I've never been. 
Never been to Canada? I've never been. So the coach said he was going to quiz me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to need to probably know their uh, national anthem. Okay. So I know it starts with O Canada. So I'm working <laughs> on the rest. Start. I'm working okay. on the rest. But no, I, I mean, like I said, it's a, it's a new experience. Okay. It's a credible opportunity. And I am going to learn as much as I can, see as much as I can, and really, you know, adapt that culture, it, whether or not I make the team. It's, it's a part of who I am, and it's time for me to go figure that out. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed, because if there's not one person that's as positive as you are and has the mental strength to get to that next level, it's going to be you. So uh, will you still talk to us when you get the gold? Oh, my gosh, stop it. <laughs> people, people, don't forget about the little people. I am the little person. You see success. I don't. Okay. I don't. I am who I am. We like to remind you just to keep your ground. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll be bugging her a lot. You know, she can't get rid of me yet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, we wish you nothing but success today uh, against the team and, you know, can't wait to hit for the ring ceremony. And for more information, for people who want to come out and see you, what's the website to come? Uh, you can just follow me on social media at E Allard, A L L A R D 2 4. Um, I respond to almost everything. Mm -hmm. I, I try, like I said, I, I do it for the fans. So if you reach out to me, chances are I will uh, holler back at you. And that's that's basically the best way to get a hold of me. If for some reason you see some guy named John with a little soft park character, watch out. He's nothing but trouble. Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. Thank you. Hey, I've been here four years. They haven't kicked me out yet. Just keep yeah, it down. True. Probably that yet. True. We'll be right back with more of Hero Television. Hi, everybody. This is Tony Ocean. And you're watching Hero TV, where everybody's a hero. Back here on Hero Television. Once again, we're here at the Comcast Studios. I'm here with John G. And John, we, big news as we talked about, we've mentioned on Facebook, we are now officially in 2.5 million homes for Comcast. That's, what? that's ridiculous. 2.5 million homes. So if the average home has 2.5 people, I, I can't do the math, but that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people watching our show now. Uh, well, yeah, they're hopefully being entertained. Well, we're doing our best. I mean, you just saw the interview with Emily from the uh, the Bandits. Bandits. Two-time back-to-back reigning champion Bandits. And, and all the other people we've we've interviewed, we've had Elliot, now we've had Emily. We have upcoming shows uh, with Tony Ocean. We have upcoming uh, interviews with Brandon Santiago, Firefighter from Villa Park. We also have Carly uh, coming up. We, I mean, we have all these great interviews. We got stuff that we didn't even know coming up. Yeah, there's so many interviews coming up. We also have, oh, don't forget uh, Father F uh, Father Ted. Yeah, we, we interviewed, so there's so many great interviews coming up, but what's the response you've been getting on Facebook? You know, it's funny. I actually was at a uh, convention, and somebody came up and said they saw us on, on TV, and they didn't, they didn't turn the channel off. They didn't? They did not. They actually thought it was good. Well, the great thing about for you viewers that every month we're going to keep bringing you interviews from different people, different events. I mean, we got pretty much the whole year lined up, and we've got more interviews coming up. We got two-parters, as I said, with Tony Ocean. We got Brandon Santiago, which is a two-parter. So we have all these great interviews, and so many other great interviews we're lining up right now. I mean, what's your biggest interview you're looking forward to? Well, I think I'm going to do some live stuff at some of these conventions. Okay. Uh, we don't have anything set in stone yet, but I think there's going to be some fun stuff coming up there. And also, too, don't forget you, you brought up about Days of the Dead. Well, that's what I'm talking about, Days of the Dead. We're, we're, we're going to be talking to some people at Days of the Dead, a, a convention that started 60 years ago in Indianapolis by a great guy at Adolfo. Mm -hmm. And now he's got, uh, he's done 22 shows already, and he's expanding, so we want to talk to him and some people there. And the great thing about it is that his convention has just spawned from just uh, doing that one convention to all over the country right now. Yeah, they just announced their sixth city, uh, Charlotte, for mm -hmm. 2018. And really the best part is that it's, it's like a family there. Y you go there and you meet people, you see people that you've known again. And Adolfo and his crew literally are, are some of the nicest people you'd ever meet. And that's what's great about Hero Television, showing you the insight interviews of all these upcoming guests. And again, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas you want to see on Hero TV, just go to Facebook, look up My Hero TV, and you'll see both of us. Also, too, we also have now our shows now on YouTube. YouTube. All the, the first two episodes, the, our introductory and our first episode with Elliot Serrano, are already up on YouTube. Uh -huh. And we're working on getting the second episode along with this uh, Emily Allard episode. So, yeah, so, so many great things coming up with Hero TV. But once again, thank you for watching Hero Television. And sit back as we have this inside clip into next month's show. Did you find to enjoy your enjoyment? What was your enjoyment? When, I mean, when you weren't in pain, like, did you have a favorite sport? 
movie you like or a favorite TV show? What? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, prior to living with my grandma, my brothers were um, my biggest fans, I guess I could say. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the youngest of four. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and my sister was adopted by my grandmother at birth. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have much of a relationship with my sister uh, up until the point that I moved in with her. So it was me roughhousing with the brothers. Mm -hmm. So I was a big sports fan. Um, music was always number one. Um, mm -hmm. That was my coping skill, uh, especially when I was able to drive. I would just drive without any aim and just listen to music um, when I didn't feel well or when I needed something to pick me up. Um, but I loved football. Mm -hmm. um, early on, I discovered I was a Peyton Manning fan. Mm -hmm. And I say Peyton Manning because when he jumped, I jumped with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I loved football. And I actually, um, from, I would say, fifth or sixth through the eighth grade, I played youth football. Really? Yes. I was the only girl on the team, um, played four years. And my last year, right before our Super Bowl run, I got clipped from behind. Uh, and it snapped my collarbone right in half. Oh, wow. wow. Um, but prior to that, uh -huh. I had a pretty good career in football. Uh -huh. uh, I was inside linebacker Kay. and nose tackle and backup quarterback. Wow. And that was full tackle football? Or? Yes, it was like a community league gotcha. football. Um, do you, your jersey, is your jersey hung up in the uh, Hall of Fame there? You know what? <laughs> even even though we tried to tell them that it was had to be cut off when that clavicle broke uh -huh. break happened, they uh, still got to give the jersey back. But I've got plenty of pictures in my jerseys, and I had multiple, you know, I had four different numbers over the four uh -huh. years, and uh, remember it all. I love football. football. What was your numbers? Uh, my first year I was 16, uh -huh. second year I was 20, uh -huh. third year I was 18, uh -huh. and the last year they couldn't give me my number, so I got 81. Did you, did you, okay. do you get, did you, what was the response from the other guy? I mean, you know, when you're being the f female out there who's playing, right. you know, not that you can't do it, it's just that psychology sometimes, like, what's yeah. she doing out here? Yeah. And then you actually pop someone, like, yeah, she's tough. Yeah, I kind of uh, set set the mode for other females uh, after uh -huh. I was finished. Um, but a lot of, mo most of the games and most of the years, I wasn't really recognized uh -huh. as a female at that point. Uh -huh. uh, I think my third, second or third year, I actually get, that was when the girl's spike haircut was in. Uh -huh. And I cut my hair off so it fit better under my helmet because wow. I got tired of putting it up in a, in a do-rag. Uh -huh. um, but one, when I knew that other teammates on the other team had found out when they started tapping my butt. Wow. And it wasn't one of those guy taps. They knew I was a girl at that point, and they were taking advantage of that. And then when you took gave them their shot, they probably stopped. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was funny because um, we had our community rivals uh, was uh, St. Joe, mm -hmm. and um, I think we were at weigh-ins, and the St. Joe's coach came up to my coach and said, that nose tackle you got, boy, he gets in that backfield. He can hit really hard. He goes, I, w I wish I could have that nose tackle on my team. And my, all my coach said was, he's a girl. <laughs> 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 and the coach just flat, just walked away. And uh, I, yeah, <laughs> it, was a, it was a pretty pretty fun time in my life. I wish I could play football again. And, and the, I, I bet you probably get one of those like, uh, uh, John Mann football create the Carly character and goes yeah that's that's yeah 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 I always all the video games football <laughs> video games um, uh, I took one year of football off which I regret mm -hmm. uh, but wanted to get some mm -hmm. I wanted to change for the time I guess and uh, I played soccer for a year mm -hmm. and I didn't like it, it was wow. too much running um, <laughs> too much running they didn't it was a bunch of uh, it was a co-ed league but I mm -hmm. think I was the only girl on the team again wow. I'm Elliot Serrano and you're watching Hero TV.